It's amazing what a good script, a uniform, and a lifelike mask can do. You helped save the Crane family derriere. Do you have the bends yet, Julian? Mm hmm? Because you have sunk to an all-time low, helping Alistair in his scheme to convince Sheridan that Luis was just using her to get to the Cranes. It worked, didn't it? Officer Lopez Fitzgerald is no longer a threat to our family and its secrets. But at the price of your own sister's happiness, how do you live with yourself? Spare me your lovelorn take on the situation. Father and I were merely taking care of business. Besides, what Sheridan doesn't know won't hurt her. <laughs> Why did you do it, Luis? Do what? Sheridan told me she's moving back to Paris. What did you do to run her out of the whole damn country? I didn't do anything. Sheridan decided to pack up and leave on her own. Don't lie to me, man. You must have done something, otherwise she wouldn't have said what she did on the phone this morning. What would Sharon say to you? Looks like Daddy never got you open after all. I guess it's still a mystery how you made Charity flip out the way she did. <sighs> if I could only figure out why, the Bennets would be one big happy family. Except for Kay, she'd never speak to me again. But Miguel would be ecstatic. And I bet Charity would even come on the ski trip. I'm going to try one more time to get you open and see if anything's inside. What have I got to lose? Yeah, if you're looking for some I came to see you, Dr. Russell. I hope you don't mind. Of course not. So, what can I do for you? It's Charity. What's wrong? Is she having those visions again? It's worse than that. She broke up with me. Well, did you two have a fight? No, I mean, she just said that she's not good for me, that, that it's dangerous for me to be around her. Dangerous? Dangerous how? She said that, that I could die because of her. Oh, my God, what would make her say a thing like that? That's why I came to see you, Dr. Russell. I was, I was hoping you'd know. I'm as stymied as you are. Is it possible that, that Charity's having a delayed reaction to the experimental drug Dr. Watts gave her? Or is, is it something worse than that? Charity, Charity, let Timmy count the ways he loves you. That's not right. Tell the... how does the poem go? Roses are red, violets are blue, lose your crush on Charity or I'll sit fluffy on you. That's not right. I mean it, Timmy. Get over your insipid infatuation with Charity. If she comes into her full powers before coming over to the dark side, you won't be worrying about love. You'll be worrying about staying alive. Now that Charity dumped Miguel and saved herself the humiliation of losing him to me, I can have him like I should have had him in the first place. Kiss me, Miguel. Make me a woman. You're a woman. I did it, Kate. I finally figured out what you did to Charity. I would hold the hand of the one who could leave me places. Of the one who could sing so sweet And I would fly on the wings of the bird I knew could take me high as breathe in, breathe out You me up alive You are the fire burning inside of me You are my passion for life And just 
What do you think Ethan is going to do when he finds out what you and Alistair have done to Sheridan? Ethan loves his aunt. Love schmuv. Ethan may have a law degree, but he still has a lot of growing up to do in time. He'll come to admire the way we crane men take care of business. No son of mine will ever admire a heartless monster like you, Julian. <laughs> heartless monster? That's a good one, Ivy. <laughs> That's so funny. I could use a good laugh now. Jordan! Julian, what's the matter? You look like you've seen a ghost. No, I just wasn't expecting to see you, that's all. I saw you drop something. Aren't you going to go pick it up? That's what we pay the servants for. It's so elitist of you, Julian. Fine, if you won't pick it up, then I will. I... Good for you, Sheridan. Your brother deserves to be taught a lesson. <laughs> what is that, anyway? Oh, it's nothing important. So, what can I do for you? I was just leaving for the airport. I thought I'd come and say goodbye. Well, goodbye, dear sister. Bon voyage. That's a little cold, Julian, even for you. Why do I have the feeling that I interrupted something very important? Because you did, Sheridan. It was very important, and it has everything to do with your leaving Harmony. Go ahead, Julian. Why don't you explain it all to Sheridan? How was it, Hank? What did Sheridan say to you? That she doesn't want to go back to Paris, but it's impossible for her to stay in Harmony now. I want to know what you did to make her feel that way. I told you I didn't do anything. Our family must have gotten on our case or something. Oh, don't insult me, man. I've known plenty of women, and I can tell whether they're mad at their family or mad at some guy they got involved with. And in Sheridan's case, it's definitely a guy, and the guy's definitely you. So what did you do to her? Look, I didn't do anything. I swear. You know, things were going fine, and then suddenly Sheridan hauls off and slaps me. You know, she never did tell me why. I guess... I guess she's just fickle. Oh, get real, Louise. Sheridan's not fickle, and you know it. Okay. So she's not fickle. But she never did say why she turned on me, okay? Look, just forget why for a minute. Do you want Sheridan to leave town? Yes or no? Doesn't matter what I want. Yes or no? Look, it's Sheridan's business, okay? Yes or no? Do you want Sheridan to leave Harmony? No, I want her to stay. The kids at the youth center really like her. Sheridan already finished her community service at the center, remember? We had that big party and you gave her a plaque. Yeah, so? So, you must have another reason for wanting Sheridan to stay in harmony. It's okay, Louise, you don't have to say it. But if you really don't want Sheridan to go, then get on the phone and call her and apologize for whatever it is she thinks you did. Then she'll stay in harmony, and then I'll have a shot with her. Come on, Luis. Do it now before it's too late. I didn't do anything to Charity Bratface, so go find another bone to chew on. If you didn't do anything, then why did Charity tell Miguel she didn't want to see him anymore? And, and why did I just see Charity staring at the floor in the living room like she'd just seen a ghost? Our cousin is losing her mind, Jessica. I've read in a magazine that it happens to kids our age sometimes. They just go wacko. Charity didn't just go wacko on her own, Kay. You made her. You hypnotized her. What? You put Charity in a trance, told her to act crazy, and made her break up with Miguel. It's the only explanation for what's happening to her. You're right, Jess. You figured it out. I did? I hypnotized Charity. And now that you know, I, I have no choice but to hypnotize you, too. <sighs> You're right. Look deep into my eyes. Stop kidding around. You will do whatever I say. This isn't funny, Kay. You will clean our room for a year. A whole year. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I did not. I knew you didn't know the first thing about hypnosis. You're right, I don't. Maybe our cousin has a brain virus or something, and you got it, and now you're going completely crazy along with her. Deny it all you want to, Kay. 
But sooner or later, I'm going to figure out what you did to Charity. And when I do, you're going to prison for the rest of your unnaturally ugly life. <sighs> Charity, are you okay? Yeah, Jessica, I'm fine. Are you sure? You looked upset, kind, kind of out of it. You know what? I, I'm not okay. I don't know what's going on with me, Jessica, but I'm scared. I'm really, really scared. Are you sure that Charity's not having any more visions? Not talking about people who aren't there? No, Dr. Russell, she's not having any visions or, or premonitions or whatever they were. Good. But ever since she got back from the hospital, she hasn't been herself. I mean, she admitted that she felt strange, but she didn't know what was causing it. I see. Yeah, and then out of the blue, she tells me that, that, that she's not good for me, that we can't see each other anymore. You know, and when I pressed for a reason, she said that if we stayed together, I could get hurt, that, that I might even die. I mean, do you know why she'd say something like that, Dr. Russell? I mean, it doesn't make sense. I don't know, but Charity has said some pretty wild things lately. So please, come talk to her. I mean, try to find out why she's acting like this. I can't stand the idea of never seeing her again. I'm concerned. Miguel has yet to arrive at the Bennett house. He comes to see Charity every morning like clockwork. Why not today? Maybe Miguel's hurt. Yes, maybe he's lying in a pool of his own blood somewhere, about to expire at Charity's hand. Timmy meant maybe Miguel's feelings might have been hurt. If Charity had said she's interested in someone... Someone younger. A snappy dresser. His love for Charity is as pure as she is. Honestly, Timmy, what do you smoke when you put on that jacket? Charity isn't interested in you. She better not be interested in anyone but Miguel. Why can't Kay have Miguel and Timmy have Charity? <sighs> Timmy. I'm not a matchmaker. I'm a witch trying to get my powers back. Now, according to the ancient tome, Charity has to kill Miguel before I can lure her over to the dark side. Now, once she's playing for Team Tabitha, I'll have all the power I need. And then you'll be able to spend as much time as you like with Charity. So we never thought of it that way. Yes, well, Timmy doesn't think at all much, does he? Now, you better start rooting that Miguel shows up. Because if he does, I have a feeling that today will be the day that Charity kills him. Okay, how brilliant is this? Miguel and I go skiing, right? So I get him to teach me one of his cool moves, and then I try to do it, and then I fall and pretend to sprain my ankle. So Miguel will insist on taking care of me, and I'll get him back in my room make myself really irresistible and then we'll make love and Miguel will be mine forever. Okay, about the irresistible part, I guess that means you're taking the vodka you stole from your parents' liquor cabinet. Very funny, Simone. No, I don't need alcohol anymore now that Charity's out of the picture. Remember she said she didn't want to see him anymore? I don't know how long that's gonna last. I think Charity would change her mind and want Miguel back. Charity better not change her mind before I get Miguel to leave on this ski trip. Then by the time we get back, it won't even matter what Charity wants. I'll be the love of Miguel's life, not my demented cousin. I just wish I knew where that bird statue was so I could have it for backup. Forget about the stupid bird statue, Kay. I don't see how there was anything inside or on it that would make Charity act the way she did. Are you out of your mind, Simone? Charity was her wackiest when that bird statue was around. I'm convinced there was something about it that made her hallucinate like a 60s hippie. Think whatever you want, Kay, but if I were you, I would forget about the stupid bird statue and about seeing it ever again. It doesn't matter anyway. The effect I'll have on Miguel when we're alone on that ski trip is going to be more potent than anything that stupid bird did to Charity. Please say yes, Dr. Russell. Kay? What? 
Miguel's here talking to my mom. We'll find out what's going on and let me know. There's one more thing I have to do to make sure I get Miguel, so I'll talk to you later, okay? Well, I'll I'll talk to Charity and I'll see if I can find out why she feels she needs a distance from you. Thanks, Dr. Russell. Miguel? I thought I heard your voice. What are you doing here? I asked your mom to talk to Charity, try to find out why she's afraid to be around me. We're just leaving. You know, I'll go too. I was going over to CK anyway. I hope Charity's not having a relapse. I had to think of what would happen if she started having those visions again. <clears throat> I, Ivy's right. What you walked in on has everything to do with your leaving for Paris. I was just saying how much we'll miss you, especially Ethan. I just came from saying goodbye to Ethan. Mm. I'm really going to miss him. And I'm going to miss you, Sheridan. I know that we weren't close when you first came back, but I feel that we understand each other now. And we're closer. We're much closer. I feel the same way, Ivy. The bond that we've formed means the world to me. Oh, I wish you'd reconsider and stay in harmony. Why don't you let me help you work out your problems with Louise? Ivy, stop filling Sheridan with false hopes. As much as I hate to see my sister go, you and I both know that she'll never be happy here in harmony with Lopez Fitzgerald strutting around, a constant reminder of her pathetic lack of judgment when it comes to men. Julian! Oh, it's, it's true, and Sheridan knows that. That's why she's leaving. We'll just have to make it our business to get over to Paris more often to see her. Well, I will. I promise I will. Come along, Julian. Let's take Sheridan to the airport. Oh, that's a capital idea. I'll drive. Oh, thanks for the offer, but uh, I hate public goodbyes at the airport. I mean, Ethan offered, but I told him the same thing. But besides, the bags are in the car, the chauffeur's waiting. It's time to go. Colin Sheridan won't do any good. I have asked her plenty of times why she turned on me, why she's leaving town. She never would give me a straight answer. She said I was a cop, that I should be able to figure it out. She's right, you should. Damn it, Hank. I've tried. You know, I, I guess that I didn't know Sheridan as well as I thought I did. Did you try and get Sheridan to change her mind and stay? Or did your stupid macho pride get in the way? Look, don't try and pin this on me, Hank. I saved the woman's life. We went out a couple times. Yeah, th things were a little rough around the edges, but... We were starting to smooth things out. And next thing I know, I've got her handprint tattooed across my face. There was nothing I could say to make her stay. Thanks a lot, pal. You drove her away before I had a chance to win her back. Look, you never even had a chance with her. Okay, maybe I was a tad jealous, okay? No, but my plan was to to wait for her to get tired of you and your Irish, Latin, whatever, and turn to me. Only thing now is she's turned her back on Harmony. This town's losing one incredible woman, and I'm losing my, my last chance with her. You know, so if you care about me, if you give a damn about your best buddy, Hank, the least you can do is pick up the phone and call her and make her tell you why she's leaving town. You're right. I hate mysteries. I'm gonna find out what happened to Sharon. I'm gonna solve this right now. Julian Crane? That's Luis Lopez Fitzgerald. If you're looking for Pilar, hang up and dial this servant's number. I'm looking for Sheridan. She there? No, Luis. Sheridan's not here. She left hours ago to catch a plane to Paris. In fact, she's probably midway across the Atlantic by now. Au revoir. Why did Louise call? What did he want? Well, he didn't say. Well, doesn't matter now anyway. Well? It's too late, Hank. She's gone. Damn! Sorry, man. 
I gotta get going myself. I got an important date. Oh, well, you don't waste any time, do you? Who's the lucky lady? She's someone special. <laughs> Real special. Um, I, I think that's a new paragraph. What? Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. You know what, Jessica? Thank you so much for helping me with this paper, but I think that I should just finish it later. I'm having a really hard time concentrating. You're thinking about Miguel, aren't you? Hi, Charity. You look, you look nice today. Thank you. Miguel, I... I shouldn't be with you. This isn't right. Why not? I mean, I don't understand. I told you, Miguel, I have this awful feeling that something bad's gonna happen to you if I stay with you. I'm sorry, but I really think you should leave. Charity, please don't shut me out, all right? Nothing bad is gonna happen to either one of us. I won't let it. You can't stop it, Miguel. Nobody can. Charity, sweetheart, can I talk to you alone for a minute? I just wanna see if you're okay. Sure, Dr. Russell. What a lovely surprise. I just had a favor to ask you, Tabitha. Oh. Well, I'm really close to winning the guy I've been after my entire life, and we're going on this school ski trip together. American education at its best. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Anyway, remember the antique brooch that you gave me? The one where I could see the face of the boy I was destined to be with for all eternity? Oh, of course I remember. I also recall the last time you looked in it, the boy's face wasn't there. Well, that could all change on this ski trip. That's why I was wondering if maybe you had a piece of jewelry that I could give him that he would see my face in. Oh. You mean then he'll think that that's a sign that you two should be together? Exactly. Hmm. Oh. Well, let me see. I haven't worn this for a long time. It, it, it doesn't have any magical qualities per se, but... If you wear it, the boy will certainly see you in a whole different light. Why not sell this swap then while you're at it, Tabitha? I wore it all the time when I was young. Boys used to say that, uh, dare I say it, made me sexy. <laughs> oh, they swarmed around me like bees to honey. Tabitha, a boy magnet? No way. Thanks, Tabitha. You're a lifesaver. Hardly. But you're ever so sweet to say so. Well, I better get going. Oh, oh, wait a minute, Kay. Uh, before you leave, tell me, how are our two little lovebirds doing, Charity and Miguel? Oh, well, they broke up. <laughs> Charity and Miguel are no longer together. Maybe there's hope for Timmy and Charity after all. Are you all right, Tabitha? Yes, dear, my tea went down the wrong way. Uh, well, you'd better be going and decide on what you're going to wear with that brooch. You let me know how you and the boy you like so much get on. I will, Tabitha. Thanks again for everything. Oh, oh any time. <laughs> Bye-bye. Why did Tabitha give... Okay, that brooch. You told Timmy you hate it. That's why I gave it to her, you ninny. That brooch wouldn't attract bugs, let alone boys. But the last thing I want is for Kay to win Miguel away from charity. But Kay said Miguel and Charity broke up. I know. And if Charity's not with Miguel, she can't kill him. And then I won't get my powers back. Oh, uh, well, Timmy senses another desperate losing plan in the works. You have to make sure that Charity goes on that ski trip with Mickey. If she doesn't, the subliminal message I gave her to kill Miguel will wear off before he gets back. 
If Miguel doesn't die at her hand, we will. Come on, Timmy. We better find out what's going on, or we'll go down in flames, literally. Miguel, are you about ready for the ski trip? I am. You know, I, I really can't think about skiing with things the way they are with charity. Mom's in the kitchen talking to your cousin right now. I'm hoping Dr. Russell can find out why charity keeps pushing me away. Try not to worry about it too much, Miguel. I'm sure Simone's mom's doing everything she can for charity, even if it's best to put her back in the hospital. No, Dr. Russell, my visions haven't come back. I'm so relieved. I mean, I know how upsetting that they were for you. I just wish I knew how they came about in the first place. I mean... It all started when that woman came into Aunt Grace's shop to sell her bird statue. Yes, I remember. And at first, I thought I saw a family being destroyed. And then I saw you and Mr. Crane together. You said what I saw never happened, right? Absolutely not, Charity. I thought that you understood that. I do, I do. I just can't imagine why I saw that, you and, and Mr. Crane, in that way. Well, I don't understand it either. So well, what's this? Oh, it's just an English paper that I was writing about the, the most powerful family in Harmony, the Cranes. Miguel was helping me write it when my vision started. Charity, this explains everything. But there's Jillian Crane's name right there in black and white. That's how you got it into your head. And I'm your doctor. And you just put both of our names into your visions. Like, like people in real life who have nothing whatever to do with each other will, will come together in our dreams. I guess that makes sense. What about my feelings about Miguel? I mean, is that just my mind playing tricks on me again? Should I forget about those two? Go on, Eve. Tell Charity to take a stab at getting back with Miguel. Hi. Hi. I'm Sheridan. I'm Renee. So, where are you off to? Paris. You? Paris? Wow. I wish I was going there. No such luck, though. I'm just here waiting for a guy. You know, story of my life. Tell me about it. You wait for the right man to come along, and when he finally shows up, he's not at all what you thought he was. Sounds like you're down on men. Oh, don't even get me started. That's the last guy I cared about turned out to be a two-faced lying jerk. Taught me to never trust another man as long as I live. That's why I'm going to Paris, to get away from him, far away. Sheridan? So, this is the guy you were talking about. I'm sorry, Dr. Russell, that I've been such a nuisance. I don't mean to, but I keep upsetting everybody. You're not a nuisance, Charity. You've been through a lot since your mother died in that fire. But if you have any more visions about me and Julian Crane, I want you to come straight to me. I mean, there's no sense in telling anyone else. It'll just upset them. Especially your husband, Coach Russell. Oh, TC would never understand. There's nothing I could say to make him understand. All right. I promise if I see you and Mr. Crane together again, no one else will know about it. Good. So just forget your visions and premonitions and anything else that upsets you. You know what? I'm trying to. 
But what I'm feeling about Miguel is different. Well, I'm sure it's just a new manifestation of the stress that you've been under. I wouldn't worry about it. Come on, Eve. Heal the rift between Charity and Miguel. So she can kill him and I can get my powers back. I wish I knew what was going on in there. And Dr. Russell has got to help Charity stop thinking she's bad for me. I'm sure everything is going to work out for the best. I have to go work in Mom's shop, but let me know what happens, okay? Yeah. Miguel, don't give up. You and Charity are meant to be together. Thanks, Jess. I need to get back home. But I'll check in with you later, okay? Thank you, Dr. Russell. And Charity, about Miguel. It's your decision, of course. But I think if you're up to it, you should go on that school ski trip. Give things between you and Miguel another try. Come on, Charity. Do as the good doctor says. Miguel's dying to go on this ski trip. Don't disappoint him. Or me. <laughs> well, I can tell by these ridiculous antics that you are very proud of yourself, Julian. Oh. Indeed I am, darling, indeed I am. <clears throat> Sheridan's off to Paris, top cop Louise is out of my hair. The Crane family secrets are safe. Well, strut and preen all you like, Julian. You're never going to teach your treachery to Ethan. Deceit isn't something you teach, darling. It's either in the blood or it isn't. In Ethan's case, one day he'll put Machiavelli to shame, like father, like son. <laughs> Tell me, Julian. Which would you really prefer? Scoring a birdie or a bird statue? What are you talking about? I'm talking about the infamous bird statue and its dirty little secrets. How did you know about that? A great big birdie told me. The truth, woman! You really don't know much about handling these matters. If you did, you'd learn to keep your door shut when you're discussing your private affairs with Alistair. Well, where's your smug little smile now, Julia? What, you two know each other? Oh, we just met. Got to talking. But it's pretty obvious you two know each other pretty well. So let me guess. This is the guy who's making you run off to Paris? So, Luis, what are you doing here? I, I can't imagine you came to wish me bon voyage. No, I didn't. Julian said he'd left hours ago. I wanted to give myself plenty of time to check in. Oh. Wait a minute. What did she mean when she said that uh, I was the guy who was making you run off to Paris? We all have our little secrets, Ivy. Let's just leave it at that. Oh. I have a feeling that your secret isn't so bad. And I think if I got a hold of that bird statue, I would have complete control over you. You're stuck raving mad. There's no bird. The only thing foul around here is you. Oh, I think there is a bird statue, Julian. And I'm going to find it.
I don't owe you any explanation, Luis. Why are you here anyway? Why do you care? I don't. I do. I mean, what did you do to Sheridan anyway to make her run off to Paris? Did you use her? Dump her? Take her money? Look, not that I owe you any explanation. But I didn't do any of those things to her. Look, you never told me that I, I was the reason that you are running off to Paris. Now, what's the deal, Sheridan? Is it true? I hope your mom convinced Charity it's okay to be with me again. But there isn't anything she should be afraid of. I really want her to come on the school ski trip with us. I hope your mom convinced Charity not to go on the school ski trip. If I can get Miguel alone for just one night, I know Charity will never get him back. Oh, go on, Charity. Tell Miguel that you will go on the ski trip with him. And then march upstairs, pack your scissors, and kill Miguel tonight. Charity's not a natural born killer like Tabitha. She won't do it. The subliminal message I planted in Charity's subconscious should overcome her innate goodness, thus allowing her to kill Miguel. If that happens, the ancient tome says that she will come over to the dark side. And the ancient tome is never wrong, Timmy. Well, you can all go in and see Charity now. I... I think I helped her get past what was troubling her. Thanks, Dr. Russell. You're the best. Believe me, Miguel, I want to see Charity get back to her old self as much as you do. So why did she feel like she was bad for me? It was just another manifestation of the residual anxiety that Charity still feels over her mother's death. I think things will be okay now that Charity understands that. Great. I'm going to go see her. Charity, Dr. Russell says you're okay now. <laughs>